Watch Dogs, welcome to day four of Vlogmas. Today is going to be an educational video, and today we're going to be talking about programming. It's kind of nerdy, so if you're not really into the stuff, you don't have to watch the whole video. But if you are curious about how we put together programs here at Watch Dog, uh, and how we progress you, then it might be interesting to watch the video, just so you have a better understanding of the why behind some of the things that we do. Now, a big influence on my programming style is Eric Helms' The Muscle and Strength Pyramid. This is a great book, a lot of solid information in there as far as recommendations on how to program, whether it be for strength or hypertrophy. Now, hypertrophy is growing bigger muscles. So that influences a lot of the decisions I make in regards to looking for a starting point with different people. And then, based on the person's response, we adjust from there. And that's how you find long-term progress, is just adjusting to yourself individually. But you want a starting point that's kind of middle of the road. So we're going to go over a few things today. First, we're going to talk about what is an effective set, how many effective sets you would want to train in a week, and how many effective sets you would want to train in a session. Okay, so we're keeping things pretty tight because this is it's a whole book. I can't cover it in one video, but we're just talking about effective sets, how many effective sets in a week, how many effective sets in a session. So what is an effective set? Typically, most research would say that an effective set, whether it be for strength or muscle growth, is going to be anywhere from 5 to 10 RPE. Now, if you don't know what RPE means, here's a quick rundown. A 10 RPE means that you would have zero repetitions in reserve. That means you've done as many repetitions as you could and you hit absolute failure. That would be a 10 RPE. By that logic, a 9 RPE would mean you have one rep in reserve and then we're going down all the way down to five, meaning you're five reps from failure. So how does that look? Let's say you are able to squat a goblet squat and you're able to do 14 repetitions with a maximum effort and like you try for 15 and you just fall. That would be 14 at 10, 14 at maximum effort. Five away from that would be nine. So at nine repetitions, you're still in that effective area, right? Because you're five repetitions away from failure. If you do nine repetitions, 14 is your max. The difference is five, five RPE. If you did 13 repetitions, you had one left, that's an RPE nine. So that's how we define an effective set. It's important to understand this definition because when we're putting together a program, we want the effective sets to count. And that's kind of a running joke here at Watchdog, right? You're doing your warm-ups, you're doing your feeders, you're getting yourself ready, you're practicing and stuff, and you're like, okay, do I write down all that stuff? No, you don't because none of that counted. That's why none of those warm-up sets count because they haven't even hit RPE 5 yet. They're good for you, you're practicing, you're warming up, and you can probably get some health benefits and they're probably good for your tissues and Maybe there's some sort of response you're getting, you know, depending. But generally, if it's below an RPE 5, you're not really going to see any progress out of that. So that's why when you're doing your warm-ups, I always say those don't count. You're only counting the effective sets when we get to the actual work. So now that we understand that, next we're going to talk about effective sets in a week. Typically, we're looking at anywhere from, let's get this out of here. effective sets, typically within a one week, we want 10 to 20 effective sets per muscle group per week. 10 to 20 effective sets per week per muscle group. All muscle groups are not built the same. Some muscle groups for one person, like let's say biceps for instance, you may have someone where they can get 12 effective sets on their biceps in a week and their biceps are just gonna grow and grow and grow. But if you try that to give that same person 16 sets, more is better, right? Maybe not, maybe 16 st sets starts making that person's elbows hurt, their connective tissues start getting all messed up, or maybe they don't even grow at 16 sets because they're doing so much work that they're overtraining their biceps and now the biceps can't grow. So usually when I do a program, I, I typically try to bias towards the lower end of this rep range. So usually I'm trying to give 13 to 14 sets per muscle group per week, which is why you'll see full body days going on, right? You're doing some legs on day one, some legs on day two, some legs on day three, 
right? I'm trying to separate, I'm trying to spread that 13 to 14 sets out across the week. Now these sets don't have to be like one exercise per muscle group. Some exercises hit multiple muscle groups at the same time. So when you squat, you're working your quads, but you're also working on your glutes. So squats, if you do four sets in a session, well, that was four sets on your quads, four sets on your glutes. Let's say you're bench pressing. Well, that's going to be four sets on your chest, four sets on your front delts, four sets on your, uh, bi on your triceps, right? So you can hit multiple muscle groups with one exercise depending on the exercise. That's always important to keep in mind when you're doing up a program and you're writing something up because if I've already given someone bench press three times in a week, right? So maybe they're on day one, day two, and day three. And on day one, they have four sets of four sets of bench on day one. Maybe on day two, they have four sets of dumbbell bench. Okay. And then on day three, maybe they have, I don't know, incline dumbbell bench. The chest has already taken 12 sets in this week. That's 12 sets here. But so have the triceps and so have the shoulders. So if I'm going to give additional triceps, like cable tricep extensions, maybe I'm only doing one more set of four on cable tricep extensions. And the, cable, the, the triceps are now taking 16 sets in the week. That's at the higher end of this range. We're good to go there. As far as the chest, you might see maybe on your day two dumbbell bench plus uh, three sets of some other chest exercise like push-ups, right? And I'm giving you three sets of chest on push-ups. If you count, well, don't push-ups hit the triceps? You're right. 16, 17, 18, 19. So we're still in a good place there and the chest has taken 12, 13, 14, 15 sets. Chest is at 15 sets. Triceps are a smaller muscle. They can probably handle more volume. So we can do extra sets. So we, I typically look at it in the week, trying to get to that 10 to 20 sets per muscle group. And then looking at all the exercises and kind of counting across the board and seeing what happens there. Now, how many sets should you do on a muscle group in any given session? Well, typically it's 10 is kind of the max there. So you can do 20 sets of leg exercises in a session, right? You didn't have this brutal leg day where you go in and, yeah, I blasted my legs. I did five sets at RP10 on leg press. And then I followed that up with uh, four sets of RP10 walking lunges. And then I did four sets of seated leg extensions and four sets of, you know, glute kickbacks and four sets of hamstrings. And man, my legs were blasted and fried. And it's like, well, you count that up and you did like 17, 18 sets on your legs in that one session. Sure, that's 20 is the high end, but that's for the whole week. Once you hit about 10 sets for most people, the rest of that's what we would call junk volume. Junk volume is basically extra work you're doing in a session that's really not going to benefit you in any way because there's diminishing returns, right? You, you start off, every set you do, you're getting a benefit, getting a benefit, but then once you get to a certain point, the benefit starts to drop off because now you're just overtraining. You don't have enough recovery to do more. So if you see someone like doing 15 different chest exercises because it's chest day, yeah, they feel great. They got a huge pump, but chances are their chest isn't growing any. So usually it's about 10 sets is the max we want to do in any given session. So that's where we're at with that. We typically do 10 to 20 set effective sets per muscle group per week. Try not to do more than 10 sets in a singular session. We do count all the muscles involved in an exercise because there can be crossover. When it comes to picking exercises, that's something totally different. And maybe I'll do a different video as far as like how to pick which exercises. But this plays a part in which exercises to pick, right? Um, so yeah, maybe we'll go into that later on. But I hope, uh, I hope this gives you some insight as far as how we figure out the number of sets you're using, why we program certain intensities, um, why we only have like three sets sometimes of something and it, we're taking into account the full picture. Additionally, if you're only training two days a week, that's why sometimes you'll have more supersets in two days a week because I'm trying to fit more of this volume, get, get you closer in two days. So you might have more supersets 
if you're only training two days a week. And you got to be okay with maybe you're only getting, you know, 10 to 13 effective sets in the week because you're only training twice. You're training three times a week, okay, well, now you're going to get more, right? You're going to have more exposure so we can fit more sets in across the week. So more isn't always better. Better is better as long as it's within the framework that we're working in. Hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.